Want to invest in and profit from a service that people can't live without? Does a yield near 4% and accelerating growth sound good to you? Interested in learning about an under the radar dividend growth stock that looks cheap right now? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a large utility serving millions of Americans. What are some things that we can't live without? Water? Yep. Food? Definitely. Energy? Pretty much. Just try to go a few days without the ability to turn on the lights, keep your food fresh, charge electronics, or control the temperature of your home. When you're selling something that people must have, there's a lot of money to be made there. And for this business, that means higher revenue, more profit, and a bigger dividend. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Nysource Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Nysource Inc., stock ticker NI, is a fully regulated U.S. utility company. Founded in 1847, Nysource is now an $11 billion by market cap utility giant that employs over 7,000 people. Nysource serves approximately 3.7 million natural gas customers and 500,000 electric customers across six states through its local Columbia Gas and Nipsco brands. The company reports results across the following two segments. Gas distribution operations, 65% of fiscal year 2021 revenue, and electric operations, 35%. What we have here is your basic regulated utility. A utility benefits from providing a service, energy, that people quite literally cannot live without in modern day society. That benefit is further reinforced by the fact that utilities are usually running local monopolies where they are the only company providing the energy for a specific service area. Having a captive customer base like this is obviously extremely advantageous to the business and its shareholders. However, utility is heavily regulated by the government in order to curtail just how advantageous this situation can be in order to prevent a company from taking advantage of customers. This ends up putting a limit on just how profitable the company can be. It's like a Ferrari that has a speed limiter installed. The speed is capped, but it's still a Ferrari. Likewise, a utility business has its profit and upside capped, but there's still plenty of money to be made from a service that sells itself. Much of that money comes in the form of a large growing dividend. Indeed, Nysource has increased its dividend for 12 consecutive years. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 9.8%, which is quite impressive for a utility. However, more recent dividend raises have been in the 6% to 7% range, but I'd argue that's really quite enough dividend growth when you consider the stock's market beating yield of 3.7%. This yield, by the way, is 50 basis points higher than its own five-year average. With the payout ratio at 69% based on adjusted EPS guidance at the midpoint for fiscal year 2022, this is a well-covered dividend. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot, a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with a high single digit or higher dividend growth rate. This stock offers a relatively high yield, and yet you don't have to sacrifice dividend growth on the other side of the coin. These dividend metrics are very good and balanced. Looking at business growth, Nysource has seen its revenue go from $5 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $4.9 billion in fiscal year 2021. Essentially flat, utilities tend to not grow very quickly, but I'd really like to see something better than a flat line here. Meanwhile, earnings per share moved from $1.39 to $1.37 adjusted over this period. Again, pretty much flat. Based on these numbers only, this utility 
isn't an exciting investment idea at all. After all, who wants to invest in a business that is not growing? Well, here's the thing. We invest in where a business is going, not where it's been. In this regard, Nysource is a lot more interesting. Looking forward, CFRA is projecting an 8% compound annual growth rate in earnings per share over the next three years for Nysource. And that's a bit more like it. I think CFRA sums up the thesis best with this passage, and I quote, we expect adjusted earnings per share growth near 5.8% in 2022 and 6.9% in 2023, followed by near 9.7% growth in 2024, accelerated by $2 billion in planned renewable spending from 2022 to 2024. We look favorably upon Nysource's progress in accelerating renewable energy investments in Indiana, with 11 new projects across wind, solar, and storage expected between 2023 and 2025, as well as its commitment of existing coal generation in the state by 2028. The company recently formalized its net zero emissions goal of 2040, ahead of many utility peers, unquote. CFRA's view is backed by Nysource's own guidance for fiscal year 2022 that came out earlier this year. Again, and I quote, non-GAAP diluted net operating earnings per share are expected to grow by 7 to 9% from 2021's full year results of $1.37 through 2024 on a compound annual growth rate basis, including near-term annual growth of 5 to 7% through 2023. Unquote. If we look at more recent numbers, Nysource narrowed its adjusted EPS guidance for fiscal year 2022 in the Q3 earnings print to $1.45 at the midpoint. That would represent 5.8% year-over-year growth. This is almost right in the middle of the 6% to 8% year-term growth the company was guiding for at the outset of the year. I'm willing to take these projections at face value as Nysource has been making good on them thus far, and this kind of underlying EPS growth would set the foundation for like dividend growth. That is, we're likely looking at mid to high single digit annual dividend growth over the foreseeable future. Meantime, you're starting off with a near 4% yield. It's not setting the world on fire or anything like that, but it is a fairly large dividend growing at a nice clip. And this is all coming from a very stable, predictable business. Frankly, one could do a lot worse than that. Moving over to the balance sheet, Nysource has a good financial position that's fairly standard for a utility. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 1.3, while the interest coverage ratio is just over three. Profitability is also par for the course. Over the last five years, the firm has average annual net margin of 4.1% and annual return on equity of 4.2%. These numbers do belie the true profitability of the business as fiscal year 2020 negatively and artificially skews things. Net margin for the most recent fiscal year came in at 12.1%. Overall, I think Nysource is a pretty good utility business that's about to look even better. And with economies of scale, a geographic monopoly, and a regulatory structure that nearly guarantees some level of profit, the company is protected by durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Regulation is a double-edged sword. Regulators allow for utilities to make a reasonable profit, factoring in capex, which puts a profit floor under the business. However, there's also a ceiling as regulators will limit the rates a utility can charge in order to protect customers from getting fleeced. Since a geographic monopoly is often in place, competition in the traditional sense is usually non-existent, but customers could become competition in the future through generation of power at the site of consumption, for example, solar panels and batteries. Because a utility lacks the ability to expand the service area very much, a utility has their fate largely tied to the geographic area they serve. Rising interest rates are a two-pronged risk. Rising rates cause higher interest expenses for the business, and the stock and its yield can also look less attractive on a relative basis. I also see black swan risk here, primarily via explosions and natural disasters. This is a solid, unassuming utility that could be nearing a serious acceleration in growth. And with the stock down nearly 20% from its 52-week high, the valuation is also unassuming. The stock's price earnings ratio is 18.5 based on midpoint adjusted EPS guidance for fiscal year 2022. I think that's quite a sensible, even modest earnings multiple for a stayed utility that could soon become much less stayed. Now, the stock's own five-year average PE ratio is being skewed by that same fiscal year 2020 that affects profitability metrics. However, a lot of utilities that I track are commanding earnings multiples of around 20 right now. The price to cash flow ratio of 8.9 is below its own five-year average of 10.1, and the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 6.5%. I'm basically extrapolating out recent dividend raises, and that extrapolation is supported by the moderate payout ratio and anticipation for higher EPS growth over the near term. 
If Nysource can deliver this kind of dividend growth with recent business growth, they can certainly do it with even better business growth in the years ahead. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $30.43. The reason I use the dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates NI as a four star stock with a fair value estimate of $32. CFRE rates NI as a four star buy with a 12 month target price of $31. I did come out low, but we have a reasonably tight consensus here. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $31.14, which would indicate the stock is possibly 14% undervalued. Here's the bottom line guys. Nysource Inc. is a solid utility selling a service that people can't live without. Recent growth isn't super impressive, but the anticipated acceleration in growth is. And we always invest in where a business is going, not where it's been. With a market beating yield, inflation beating dividend growth, a moderate payout ratio, 12 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 14% undervalued, income-oriented dividend growth investors could have a strong long-term opportunity on their hands. And now for a special news announcement. British American Tobacco PLC stock ticker BTI just reported strong preliminary results for fiscal year 2022. Revenue came in 7.7% higher year over year while adjusted EPS grew by 5.8% year over year. Plus, the dividend was increased by 6%. I don't bring this one up often, but these are pretty solid results. If you're okay with investing in tobacco, it's a cash cow. The stock now yields almost 8% and it's cheap. If you haven't taken a look at this name yet, put it on your radar. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. Thank you.